Hey you guys, happy Sunday. Welcome to our Sundays with Summit Health. I am Coach Amy and we are going to be chatting today about how hard lines and traffic lights might be helpful for you to improve your health. So I've got some notes here. I want to make sure I don't miss anything. You guys know if you have, if you're a, if you're a member of this group, you know that we as Summit Health Coaches feel that you creating new habits, new sustainable, lifelong habits and finding balance is really what we're all about. We are not about extremes. That being said, sometimes we have to set hard lines. Sometimes we have to commit to quote unquote, um, something that may seem extreme to us in order to reach our goals. And so we're going to talk about that today. Yes, balance is key and finding that balance for each of us is really, really important. But what might be some hard lines that we want to commit to and never go back? Okay, so first thing I want to talk about is hydrogenated oils. If you decided to commit to never eating hydrogenated or partially hydrogenated oils ever again, you would see better health, period. And I would love it if you set that goal. Start looking at things that you buy. Start looking at the freezer, the frozen you know, foods. Look at pizzas, look at coffee creamer, look at frozen pastry dough or the pop can pastry dough. Um, if you set a hard line to never buy canola oil or vegetable oil again, that would improve your health. So again, in certain things we wanna find balance, but there are certain things where it's just like set a hard line and call that it. Look at your more processed foods, cookies, again, um, crackers, pastries, look at the ingredients. Do they have hydrogenated canola oil or vegetable oil, vegetable oil in them? Let it go, move on, make a different choice. Okay, second thing, fast food. Fast food is not, a lot of our clients eat fast food and it is not the devil, okay? But for some people, fast food is a gateway to making other poor choices. If it's a gateway for you, if it's something that you can just not say no to, let it go, move on, commit to never eating fast food again. Now, that's something that Chad and I committed to, boy, probably six or seven years ago when Chad was going through, and it might've been longer than that because he, I wanna say it was over 10 years ago that he was diagnosed with melanoma. When we cleaned up our diet to really move his health forward because of, his, because of a cancer scare, we committed to no eating fast food. And rarely have we ever again. Sometimes we've been on road trips where it's literally the only thing. Um, and Chad usually digs his feet in and he won't do it, but occasionally. Again, let's just look at, could it be a gateway? Can you find balance with it and you know how to make good choices? Awesome. But if it's a gateway to lots of other poor choices, then let's not do it, right? Okay, another one, snacks that are carbs only. Again, this is this is simple. You know, having an apple, that's that's pretty much only a carb. Is that a bad snack? No, it's absolutely not. To move your health forward though, what if you made the commitment to never have a snack unless it has protein in it? That would be a fantastic goal. That would be a fantastic sort of hard line to move your health forward. So I love that. Again, it's not, it doesn't have to be all or nothing, but it's just a great like, hey. I'll never eat a snack again that doesn't contain protein. We never eat enough protein, and so it's a great way to make that happen. How about soda pop? Again, drinking pop is not the devil. I'm all about finding balance, but for some of our clients, it is a trigger. If it's a trigger for you, let it go. Commit to never having pop again. That was one of the very first things that Chad committed to cutting out. He would drink like two liters of Mountain Dew in a day, right? He committed, cut it out, done, has never had pop again. Is that something that would move your health forward? From a calorie perspective, 100%. From an insulin regulation perspective, it absolutely could. And again, as a gateway, it could move things forward as well. Diet soda. There's a lot of research, you know, there's mixed opinions on diet and artificial sweeteners, what they do or don't do to your body. Um, I'm not, we're not going to talk about those things, but the reality is diet soda can be something that works really well for a lot of people to curb their sweet tooth. Maybe they love having a diet pop and it prevents them from having a regular pop and it's a great fit for them. Like it just, it makes them feel like they have something sweet, they move on and they're good for the day. For other people, that diet soda is a gateway. 
I've got one client who gave up her diet Pepsi and that has been a hard line that has kept her on track with all of her other goals because she's honoring that commitment she made to herself. So again, it's all about your journey, but perhaps diet soda might be the thing. Candy. Okay, so this is something for me. I try to set a hard, like for it, for the most part, in my opinion, M&Ms, you know, Hershey bars, those are gross. Like if you stop and think about it and you stop and you really like enjoy, they don't taste good. They taste like waxy grossness, right? Instead, I will choose to enjoy a delicious dark chocolate or a dish, delicious something else, truffle, something that I really want to enjoy. But I just committed like, I'm not gonna buy, I'm never gonna buy a Hershey's bar. I'm never gonna buy m ms I'm never gonna buy, you know, Mike and Ike's because that's just a hard line for me that I don't need to go down that road. Um, what is it for you, right? Uh, pastries, that's the other thing. A lot, I've got clients who first thing in the morning, they wanna go to their favorite coffee spot and they also wanna grab a pastry. Again, not an issue, we can make that work. It's just like budget, we can give and take, but is it a gateway? Is that a way for you to start out your day? Way too carb heavy, insulin is already spiked. Now the rest of the day, we're just trying to catch up with it. We're way behind on protein. And if we would have just committed to, you know what, I'm not gonna eat pastries, that might move us towards our end goal. Um, sugary coffee, that, uh, that's the second one, right? Is the coffee that we love full of four pumps of caramel and chocolate and mocha and all the things, it's 66 carbohydrates with 24 grams of fat. No, it's all about finding balance, but is that going to derail our goals? Is that gonna move us away from where we want to go? So you do you, but think about that choice, right? Alcohol, again, finding balance with alcohol, but a lot of people report, they find that they don't miss it and they find that they make better choices without it. They also find that their sleep is greatly improved without it. And so might alcohol be one of those things where we just set a hard line. Hey, two days a week, I'll drink alcohol and the other five, I'm gonna let it go. That's my hard line. Uh, nighttime snacking. This is a big one for people. Um, oftentimes, eating close to bed, if we're in a calorie deficit, that is what matters. If you are in a calorie deficit, you could eat all your calories within 30 minutes of going to bed and nothing bad is going to happen. It's not all going to turn to fat. Will you sleep poorly? Quite likely you will because you're not gonna be in restoration mode, you're gonna be in digestion mode. That being said, a calorie deficit is a calorie deficit. However, what happens is oftentimes people, we've eaten breakfast, we've eaten lunch, we've eaten dinner, now it's 10.30 at night, I'm feeling a little hungry, the commercials on TV are making me feel really, really snacky, and what do I feel like eating? Popcorn, chips, chips and salsa, ice cream, all the things that are very calorie dense, and I've eaten all my food for the day. So what should I, maybe we just set a hard line. I am not going to snack at night past 8.30, period. If you wanna have a snack, you're gonna have it before 8.30. Hopefully you have the willpower, you've had dinner recently, you're not gonna make the poor choice, and that is just your hard line. That could prevent a lot of unnecessary calories and a lot of unnecessary like willpower. If we can remove the need to have willpower, we are going to win. So that's the beauty of hard lines. Some, the, a book that I love, Coach Lauren just finished actually, is Atomic Habits. And he talks a lot about removing the need for willpower. If you just know when you walk in Subway, you're not ordering a cookie, you're not ordering chips, and you're not ordering soda pop, you're gonna have your salad, your sandwich, your wrap, your flatbread, and that is precisely what you're gonna have. It removes a lot of the stress of you having to decide, should I have a cookie today or shouldn't I? Should I get the pastry today or shouldn't I? Should I have a nighttime snack or shouldn't I? I really want ice cream, but should I have Greek yogurt instead? If you have a hard line of, I'm not eating after 8.30, there's no question. It just is what it is. So I want you to just take these principles and think about how you having that hard line can really help. Let's say it's fast food. You know, when we're traveling, you know Chad and I, we love adventure. We're always on road trips, camping here and there. We could simply say, it's just way easier to eat fast food. That's a hard line for us. So guess what, we, we pack our own food. That, contributes a ton to our health because we're not eating more processed food. We're not eating excess calories. And when we stop, we stop and get healthy snacks, whether it be Quick Trip or the grocery store or eh, Starbucks, you know, they have some better healthy options, a little bit on the spendy side, but we just know those are our choices. It removes us having to make the decision, 
fast food. Where are we going to go? What's the better option? Should we do this? Should we? we? It's just off the table. So let's talk about traffic lights. So how do traffic lights come into play to our overhaul, overall health? <clears throat> I know we've talked about this in the past as well, but I want to educate you guys on a concept of red light foods, green light foods, and yellow light foods. Red light foods are foods that you cannot eat without going all in. You cannot say no to. You just almost gorge yourself or binge or sort of have this sort of storm eating. It's like pretty soon you ate the entire bag of Lay's potato chips and it was just like, what happened? I don't know how that happened. Whatever it is for you, Oreos, right? Did we eat the entire sleeve of Oreos before we even realized it? Whatever it is, if we have a red light food, we have to stay away from those things. Number one, don't buy them. Literally do not buy them. Um, do not keep them in your house. So even if you have a family and your red light food is something, maybe it's Twizzlers and your kids love Twizzlers, you may just have to explain to your kids, I'm sorry, this is just something that we are not going to keep in our house. If you want to have them when you go to the movie or when you go, you know, to a soccer game, you can have them then, but we are not going to keep them in the house. That's a great way to kind of set a parameter and set you up for success. A yellow light food is a food that sometimes may trigger you to overeat or sort of that create that storm eating, but you can say no to. If you are eating balanced, if you're eating enough nutrition, enough protein in your everyday life, you can say no to those things. So perhaps you keep them in your house, but maybe you don't eat them. Maybe you know you can have them in your house, but you don't eat them. Maybe you just portion out um, what you'd like and you walk away and you go get busy and you whatever. Maybe you hide them at the back of your pantry or you put them in the freezer if that's an easier way for you to say, to say no to that thing. Okay, a green light food is something that you know, love, and enjoy within balance and it's never a trigger. Those are things that we want to eat a lot of. So the yellow light things you want to kind of keep on hand and maybe have for treats here and there, but not something that you want to go all in on all the time. Those red light foods are things that we want to completely stay away from. Can we ever reintroduce red light foods? Possibly. You know, for me, a red light food used to be almond butter. I, it was just something that I couldn't keep in the house because I just, I would eat too much of it all the time. It would just make me sick. I can now keep it in the house. I can moderate it. I can say I can have some of it and I don't have to have all of it. And it's worked really, really well. Has that come from me learning to nourish my body appropriately? Probably. Has it come from me establishing a healthier relationship with food? Probably. There's maybe a lot of reasons or things that I've worked through. So everything is different for you. And so testing out those red light foods in a healthy scenario can be a great idea. Um, marshmallows. <laughs> Confessions of Amy here. I, d I don't keep marshmallows in the house. That's still a red light food for me. I love them. I will, one will turn into six, will turn into 16. So I just don't keep marshmallows in the house. It's very annoying to me that if we have friends over and want to have s'mores, I have to throw three quarters of a bag of marshmallows away, but it's just what I do. It's what I do to set my environment up for success because I'm not going to keep them in the house where I feel tempted to enjoy too many of them. So just little things that I want you to understand and learn to set yourself up for success. That's it. That's all I have for you guys on this Sunday. I hope you enjoy the day. Let us know in the comments. Share with us maybe what you've learned about red light foods, yellow light foods. Also, I would love to know what your hard lines are. What are you saying absolutely no to just so you can really move the needle when it comes to improving your overall health? Thanks again for taking the time to watch you guys. Enjoy your Sunday.